What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out top 10 WWE promos that will make you cry. Now, a good emotional promo that you can buy into that the, the wrestler is very passionate about, and you can tell there's a lot of truth being said in the promo can bring out the the waterworks can bring out the tears can bring out the emotion in fans watching and that's usually a good sign if you can make people believe what you're saying is true and there are some actual truths to what you're saying and whatever you're trying to convey and um whatever emotions you're trying to bring out in the viewers and the fans watching in attendance and at home you're doing a good job and we've seen some very emotional promos uh, over the years so we're gonna check out some of the best ones that you know brought a tear down you know brought brought out the emotions that in uh in, in us watching them so should be a very uh good one to go down memory lane appreciate all love support let's get right into this one man one, two, is this on we often get swept up in the emotions of wrestling. Classic. Matches are one thing, but when you can truly feel and resonate with the words from a promo, that's when the sport becomes real and truly grips us. Today, we're going to focus on those segments that really hit close to home and pulled on our heartstrings as we list the top 10 most emotional promos in wrestling. First, we have two honorable mentions. Mm. Retiring from the ring is never easy, nope. but it's one thing to end a career on your own terms. Being forced to retire due to injury is a sad way to go out, an unfortunate reality for numerous wrestlers, including Edge, who's said goodbye to the squared circle in 2011 after mm -hmm. a history of neck problems. As the MRI showed that uh, that I have to retire. And I'm glad that he's he's back finishing up his career on his terms. I've still been watching what he's been doing in AEW. Um so I uh, you know and I have been liking some of the stuff. I, I do think they they've kind of overbooked it uh in a sense with him going against Christian Cage but I have been for the most part enjoying it I do think it could be could could have been handled better in my personal opinion but I'm just glad that Edge is doing what he loves and he's back in wrestling even when he came back in WWE I was very happy about that and that's always good to see man so this is a little bit tougher than I thought it was going to be. It was a teary affair for the rated R superstar who took the solace in the fact that he was able to go out on top as the world heavyweight champion. However, after eight years away, Edge made a triumphant return at the 2020 Royal Rumble. Awesome. He's thinking of me. No, no this way. is so cool, man. Oh, no! oh this is so but cool. I hope that all of you join me on this ride. A rest of retiring is sad because it's so real. So imagine using something that's inherently emotional in a storyline, paired with an Oscar-worthy performance that fooled everyone. As Mark Henry uh, was to retire from wrestling yeah. on the June 17, 2013 edition of Raw. Mar Shout out to Mark Henry, man. Shout out to him. I, I, I told him personally, this is one of the greatest promos ever delivered. And it got me. He got everybody. This was so good. Love this promo, man. Mark had interrupted a promo from WWE Champion at the time, John Cena. Mark spoke directly from the heart, with tears in his eyes. His final moments as a member of the active roster were to be perhaps some of his greatest, as he gave such an impassioned speech that had everyone in the arena thanking him for his career. To my little girl, Joanna, baby, I'm coming home. Cena allowed Henry to hold up the WWE Championship, a title the world's strongest man had never won. And then, just like that, Mark so did what was seemingly unthinkable good. in the circumstances. <laughs> That this was type so of good, bro. hadn't been done too often in wrestling, but even at that, few angles in history fooled fans like Mark Henry's fake retirement. I'm coming home, WWE Champion. It was everything we love about wrestling. It hit on something real that drew us mm -hmm. in emotionally, only to swerve us at the last minute with an act which we didn't see coming, but made sense in the context of the story. Number 10, HBK loses his smile. Shawn Michaels is no stranger to being involved in emotional moments in wrestling. Yep. <laughs> such as when he called it a career the night after losing to The Undertaker at WrestleMania 26. Mm -hmm. Heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels has left the building. So good. One of the most emotional segments involving Shawn happened in February 1997, when Michaels had to forfeit the WWF title due to injury. It's remembered as the promo where Shawn lost his smile. I've lost a lot of things and one of them has been my smile. It was a single... Most greatest 
year of my life. Despite the sobbing, some people doubted the severity of Michael's injury, including Bret the Hitman Hart, who Sean mm -hmm. was penciled in to wrestle at the upcoming WrestleMania. You phony little faker, why don't you right, take right, your little pussyfoot injury? No. <laughs> 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 where Brett was expected to get his win back after losing to HBK at the previous year's Mania. I remember I didn't buy any of it. I thought this is the biggest bunch of bullshit ever. It's just his way of not dropping the belt to me, which just to be reeked of unprofessionalism. Number nine. Bro, he, they, their hatred for each other. I've got their, their um, better terms, but nah, their hatred for each other back then. Oh, they hated each other, bro. They hated each other. <laughs> they hated each other. They were making good money, but boy, they, they, nah, that wasn't an act. That was real life. Nah, I don't like you. I think you're the worst. They thought the worst of each other. It was fucking different time, man. This Daniel one right Bryan here got me too. Speech. Daniel Bryan's retirement was also a case of recurring injury forcing him to step away. In Bryan's case, it was due to concussions. His emotional farewell saddened fans, but they and the other talent were able to give Daniel's career a great send off. In his hometown of Seattle, Bryan reflected this on his one love hit for me, wrestling boy. and thanked the fans for their unwavering support that helped make him a star. I have loved this in a way that I have never loved anything else. Daniel gave a special mention to the night, which also took place in Seattle, where fans hijacked mm -hmm. the WWE World Title Unification Ceremony, since it was the last time Brian's father was able to watch his uh. son perform live before he passed. This is maniacal! <laughs> the WWE Universe is going wild! And that was the uh. last time my dad ever got to see me wrestle. And you guys made it special. Uh, this the shit, crowd and the entire- This shit's hitting me now. Ah, this shit. Oh. That shit still hits, bro. Watching that live, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I definitely shed it. I shed a tear because I was like, damn, his career is cut short and it sucks, you know? Um, but the fact that the fans really got behind this guy and made him an A plus player. We knew he was an A plus player in the ring. WWE didn't know, or they didn't want to know. And the fans got behind him and and let it be known. Nah, this is the guy we want. Fucking just fantastic. Tied WWE roster yesed and applauded Brian to cap off a sad but wholesome segment. It was just over two years later that Brian was medically cleared to return to the ring. Daniel once again emotionally addressed the audience to announce his comeback. And if you fight for your dreams, your dreams this is cool will too. fight for you. Got a great heel turn out of it too. Brian returned to action at WrestleMania 34 in New Orleans. Resting in the same building, he achieved his greatest uh -huh. feat four years prior. There's the name! Sammy Number eight, Roman Reigns goes through leukemia amidst a runner's universe. And this was very emotional too. Watch this live. This was because for the first time we saw him, Joe. We didn't see Roman Reigns. We saw the man behind the character. This is what we saw. This is what we believed in. This is what we knew. Okay, this is real. They're not forcing this on us. And I wish WWE would have capitalized on just allowing him to be himself more. Instead of trying to force it when he came back. But ultimately, we end up getting the Roman Reigns we have now. But this right here. This was... A glimpse behind the character and it, it was it was an emotional moment wrestle champion in 2018 roman reigns was forced to relinquish his title in the cruelest of ways reigns spoke out of character telling the world he'd previously been diagnosed with leukemia and that mm -hmm. it had sadly now returned the crowd was stunned into silence yeah my real name is joe and i've been living with leukemia for 11 years and unfortunately it's back and i'm not gonna lie i'll take every prayer you can send my way but i'm not looking for sympathy Fans were in shock at the announcement, with yeah. some being driven to tears. However, Roman assured us it wasn't a goodbye. This was just a see you later. And Truth it was one of those things where people was like, oh, wait a minute. Holy shit. He's, he's, he's being real here. And you can buy into, I'm telling you, you, if you can connect with people and make them believe you, you're golden. 
Not the character you're playing. Of course, you're trying to get them to believe the character you're playing, but the character has to be an extension of you for people to buy into it. You know? So this was this was a tough one. Due to his word, Roman would return four months later to much fanfare, thanking the fans and announcing he was in remission. I'm in remission, y'all. Before sharing a moment with his mother and Shield partner Seth Rollins. Welcome back. Number seven, Rick. Good Flair. moment. Even though the retired wrestlers we've looked at so far ended up returning to the ring, we still can't deny the sheer emotion and sadness felt when they first had to step away. The same goes for the Nature Boy, mm -hmm. Rick Flair. Nate said goodbye to his illustrious wrestling career in 2008. Flair's career ended in style with a tearful address that was followed by a who's who of his friends, family, and former rivals that came down to celebrate Rick's career. Mm -hmm. I have had the greatest wrestling career in the history of I just wish it would have ended there. They literally had one of the perfect matches to end a career. HBK, um, Ric Flair. And I love the, the booking stipulation. It was simple. Anytime Ric Flair lost from that period, he would have to retire. So he had to keep winning, which made you want to buy into watching is this going to be Rick's last match? And it was a perfect send off with HBK. The, the, I love you before the super kick. It was just so good. And then he couldn't stay away. He couldn't stay away. He couldn't help himself. I, me personally, and I can't tell a man what to do with his life and his career. But me personally, I think his retirement match, his last match with HBK. That should have been the retirement match. For just that should have been it. It was perfect. But hey, I uh, you know I can't control that. Of pro wrestling, I have wrestled in front of more fans, raised more hell, had more fun, and loved all of you every day of my life. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I love you, man. Ah, Flair's so time good. in wrestling is remembered for his legendary promos, which were filled with passion and emotion. With a tear in my, my eye, this is the greatest moment in my life. Art Anderson <laughs> passed the torch. It was real, damn it. I have to wake up every day and look at this guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is you! This is what you did! Yeah, it hurt! It still hurts! Number six, John Cena never gives up. Mm. A promo that epitomizes John Cena's career. As Cena addressed his WWE Championship loss to Sheamus at the previous night's TLC pay-per-view, John cut a fiery promo, upholding his mantra of never give up. Cena spoke about his passion for the WWE. He was like a man possessed, determined to regain his title. I needed to take a second. And I wanted to apologize to anybody that I might have let down last night. This is kind of hard to understand, but sometimes you can try so hard at something. Sometimes you can be so, so prepared and still fail. And with every time you fail, it's painful. It causes sadness. And especially as I saw last night, it causes disappointment. I've often said a man's character is not judged after he celebrates a victory by, by, but by what he does when his back is against the wall. So no matter how great the setback, how severe the failure, you never give up. You never give Not up. You pick chance. yourself up, you brush yourself off, you push forward, you move on, you adapt, you overcome. That is what I believe. The WWE Universe is all I got. This is my everything. So I'm not gonna say tonight that I'm gonna, I'm gonna work harder that I'm going to be more dedicated. I'm going to put more time in the gym. That's impossible. What I'm going to say to all of you tonight that are going to listen is what happened to TLC will never happen again. Everybody here. <laughs> For me, man. <laughs> I don't know if this promo would have made me cry back then. This is that era of John Cena. I don't know if it would have made me cry. If I'm a kid and I'm a Cena fan, that probably would have inspired me, brought some tears to my eye. Like, you get him, John. Me personally, I would be like, okay, bro. We know Vince is gonna make things right, <laughs> booking wise. Here, everybody watching, I won't be stopped. I can't be stopped. 
We know, Tom. <laughs> Cena is sometimes accused of underselling losses or brushing things off with jokes, but neither was the case in this instance. Cena put over the gravity of his loss by projecting how it made him feel and what he would do to respond, all while having the crowd in the palm of his hand. This was Cena at his best. Number five, The Miz. Next, we have an example where Cena, not taking a wrestler seriously enough, played into the story. It happened on an episode mm -hmm. of Raw from August of 2017, when after two initial jokes from Cena, so this is what a sold out bars case looks like. It's, it's Barclays, Barclays. Real good, always making a joke out of everything. The Miz fired back to cut one of the best promos yeah, in his career. Yeah, this Should was I good. interrupt a moment? How many moments do you two get? Because you know, in life, you're always told that if you work hard, if you chip away, if you plug away, if you do your job, then your moment will come and I am sick of waiting for my moment while two undeserving people like you two get moments week after week after week. This, this is good. my show week in and week out. I'm the one working here. Not you and not you. I am sick. This is really good, bro. I'm not getting the respect I deserve. Your shirt says respect. Earn it. I've earned it for 12 damn years. This is Where good. is my moment? The frustration felt by Miz here had previously been seen at different points in his career, mm -hmm. especially during his famous Talking Smack this promo in 2016, really good, where he clapped bro. back after criticism from Daniel Bryan. So good. And I'm sick of all of you, my GM, sitting there criticizing me, calling me the coward. I'm the one here, day in and day out, in that wrestling ring, beating people up. Number four, Dolph Ziggler Man, reflects- this is one of those things where it's like, this is why he's there. Still, this is why you may not agree with his in ring work, it may be kind of lackluster. But the guy, he's good on promos, bro. Whether people want to admit it or not, he can, he when he's fired up, he can, he can sell you on a match, he can sell you on an idea. He has the charisma, he has the, 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 uh, the character to do it. He believes in himself when no one else does. And hey, man. Commendable. This one also was a good one too from Dog. Thanks on his career, Ziggler was one of the standout performers in the WWE during much of the PG era. However, he never reached the main event level, which led to frustration. This mm -hmm. frustration was seen during some of Dolph's promos. I tell everyone, I'm great, I'm awesome, I'm the best, you can't follow me, and yet I still, I don't come out on top. Every night, I deliver! And if everyone is in my head telling me what's wrong, I know that I am right. For 11 years, I've never heard that wasn't good enough. I told sometimes I've been told that was too good. This continued to the point where mm -hmm. Ziggler, being seemingly destined to be a career mid carder, mm -hmm. began to be used in storyline. It's you who wins the WWE Championship, and it should have been me. You all. <laughs> Classic. It should have been me. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be a serious video, but still. Respect him, and you all admire him, and it should be me! It should have been me! It should have been me! Perhaps the most famous was Ziggler's passionate <laughs> speech to his hometown of Cleveland during a feud with yep. The Miz in 2016. This was Dolph good. Was close to tears while pondering how his career had not gone the way he'd hoped. This, this is all I have. This couple minutes a night, 300 nights a year, this is my everything. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone when this they know such that a I good live feud. for this. This, this is what I love. But you know what? Sometimes things you love don't always, always love, love you, you back. back. And you can give, 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 and sometimes you get nothing in return. You get nothing. And you have friends and family and fans coming up to you telling you, why do you still do it? Why are you still here? Why do you subject yourself to this every night? And maybe my career didn't always turn out the way I thought it would, you know? I thought it would have been better. I thought I, I thought I earned something. I thought I would be a bigger star, but you know what? I just can't stop myself. No matter how many matches he'd lost or how the office viewed him, Ziggler so was still good. able to make fans believe in him again thanks to this outstanding promo. It set up a match where Dolph put his job on the line versus yes. the Intercontinental Champion The Miz so in good. a career versus title match, which Ziggler ultimately won. Number so three, good. Cody Rhodes battles through family and pain. The American Nightmare has cut his fair share of emotional promos. It mm. took me to go from undesirable 
undeniable to un-goddamn deniable the undisputed WWE Universal Champion. I have to finish the He be giving story. some good promos too. A skill no doubt passed down to yep. him by his father, the American dream, mm -hmm. Dusty Rhodes. I have wined and dined with kings and queens. And I've slept in alleys and dined on pork and beans. Get a dream, hold on to it, and shoot for the sky. My times are when the textile workers around this country are out of work. They got four or five kids and can't pay their wages. They each showcase their ability to blend their real life into the world of pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. Because of this, fans don't just buy into what they were saying, they felt it. Since wrestling is often at its best when it can mirror the human experience. It was only fitting that Cody battled his brother Dustin in an incredible match, which was followed Great by match. a very personal moment between the two siblings I need my older brother so good great match great storytelling Cody's first promo back after returning to WWE so was significant as much as it was tearful it laid out his plan to not just follow in his father's footsteps but achieve something the dream never could the American dream Dusty Rhodes he was my hero at eight years old I knew not what I wanted to do, what I needed to do. I was going to win this championship belt right here. I was going to bestow it into the hands of the American Dream Dusty Rhodes and I would tell him, nobody can take it away from you now. Unfortunately, that dream died. It died right in front of me. Yes, I cannot physically put that title belt into my father's hands. I cannot bestow it upon the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, but I certainly can put it around the waist of the American Nightmare. And I am going to do it for the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. I hope he's able to, bro. I hope he's able to. But he, he dropped an emotional promo uh, a couple weeks back. Um, not this past Monday Night Raw, but the week before. That's cool. He dropped a better one this week. Continue that intensity, man. We know that's the overall goal to dedicate it to your father. You got to win it first. When you win it, bring on the waterworks. I'm here for it. <laughs> But Cody's path to the WWE title was going to be far from straightforward. An injury setback led to an impassioned speech after Rose wrestled inside Hell in a Cell with a torn peck. In what could have been the lowest point in my career, in what could have been the absolute worst night, in what was literal hell, I was not cynical, I was not jaded, I stood, I fought. A run-in with Paul Heyman in the lead-up to WrestleMania 39 saw Cody put his feud with Roman Reigns briefly on hold in order to thank Paul for looking after the Rose family by giving Dusty work in ECW mm -hmm. during a period where the family's money had run out. ECW gave my father his confidence back and I can never ever... This was good. I ain't gonna hold you. This leading up to WrestleMania, chef's fucking kiss because it was real. It was real. This was... Something they history ain't this was real. This was good. I fucking love this, but you also know we're talking about Paul Heyman and how Paul Heyman is. And ah, this was good. Fucking love it, bro. This was good. Repay you for that. Number two, Bray Wyatt. Oh, returns. No. Fans welcomed Bray Wyatt back to the WWE oh, with no. open arms. Bray endured a rough Rest year, in peace, Bray. having lost two people close to him on top of getting fired. We were ready to see a different side to Wyatt Rest this time around. His return promo was incredibly heartfelt. We could really feel every word Bray said. I'm incredibly grateful. This was so good. I'm really, really nervous to be here, but I never thought of this would happen. This past year in my life, I've, I, I lost a lot of things. I lost my career. I lost my self-confidence. I lost two people who were very, very close to me. I lost my way. I thought that everything that I'd ever done here or otherwise, I thought it was all meaningless. Nothing I ever did has mattered to anyone. I was wrong. I can sit here right now Definitely today wrong, and I bro. can look all of you in the eyes we all and I can say it. that you were there when I was weak, when I was vulnerable, when I was down. So I just wanted to say thank you. You all saved my life. Damn, bro. This this hits, man. We were never able to truly see what this version of Wyatt was capable of due to his tragic passing in 2023. All of you can feel the spirit of Bray Wyatt in this building. 
This made his return promo even more poignant. We can take comfort in how this promo allowed Bray to see what he meant to the fans, oh, while also man. telling them what they meant to him. Number one, Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, bro, this is oh, this tough, bro. That shit tough, man. Anytime. That shit tough, bro. Because you can tell he was genuinely happy because he didn't know if the fans really cared, really missed him. And you can tell that they did, that we did. We understood that Vince didn't really get it and they WWE upper management didn't really appreciate it. They liked the sales. They liked the merch sales, but they didn't really appreciate it or understood the best way to handle his character and his, and his creativity. But the fans appreciated it. So the fact that he was able to see that before his passing, I just let you know, you know what I'm saying? The power of the fans and us Truly caring for a wrestler, even when management doesn't, man. Doesn't. That's a tough one. I ain't gonna lie to you. That one almost choked me up again. Guerrero's new addiction. As we've seen from each entry on our list, the best promos are often rooted in reality, yep. with real life feelings and emotions being expressed that in turn are tied into the storyline context of wrestling. Eddie Guerrero's story arc was one of the most captivating uh -huh. because of how it incorporated his real life struggles with addiction. This coupled with how much harder he had to work due to being undersized, as well as the story that was told, helped make Eddie's eventual crowning mm -hmm. moment so much Great more special. Moment. But right before this could happen, Guerrero delivered a career defining promo on the go home show before his big match. Eddie's upcoming opponent, Brock Lesnar, had previously brought up Guerrero's past substance abuse issues, allowing Latino Heat to fire back and speak about his struggles with real life emotions as a way to build for the match. I am an addict. About three years ago, Holmes, they carried me straight into rehab. Through all that time, bro, through all those three years, not only did I wind up losing my jaw, mm -hmm. I lost my wife, I lost my kids, and I lost myself. I disgraced my race, I disgraced my family, Great and promo. I disgraced myself day by day. I have earned my life back. See, when I step into this ring, yeah, bro, I am addicted. I'm addicted to the high that I get from them. I'm addicted to the high that I get when I go home and I tell my family, hey, I'm doing it. I'm addicted to the satisfaction that I get mm -hmm. to tell everybody like you that didn't believe in me, you can stick it up your ass. <laughs> Winning the WWE title would be Eddie's final step to redemption. Yep. Now, if you enjoyed this video, this be sure great. to check out a similar video on 10 moments that complete. This was great, man. Gotta go ahead and like this video. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a like, bro. This was fucking fantastic, bro. It got me. The Bray stuff got me. I know they're supposed to be doing the documentary. Uh, I think it comes out uh, April 1st. So I'm definitely going to be checking that out. Um, yeah, that one's probably going to hit me too. I ain't going to hold you. That Bray Doc is definitely probably going to hit me. But uh, I'm going to be checking that out. And I'll probably talk about it on here. Like my thoughts and opinions, you know, on the uh, documentary and stuff like that. So if you guys want me to check it out and talk about it on here, I definitely will. Um, but yeah. Bruh, it's just, I'm telling you. When wrestlers break like break that break down their character and they show more themselves within the context of their character you believe it more you buy into it more it resonates with you that's how we are as human beings we like to relate to people and what they go through so when you see more of themselves their true selves come out we can buy into it and it makes for an impactful and an emotional moment so comment down below let me know a promo from a particular wrestler that when you watch it no matter when you watch it no matter how many times you've seen it it hits you in the feels every single time let me know what promo what wrestler uh that delivered that uh promo who that was and what company and you know how does that promo you know make you feel from that particular person let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support 
road to 150k and i'm still getting speed to youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking in with me see y'all next one peace